Then I'm out running the dark. Climate change, a new outlook. Have you seen these on people's stories? Being a young adult slash teenagers, everybody likes to put these on their stories that they care about the environment. And no disrespect to Tentry,、um, what they do is a great thing. However, sadly, in the larger scale of things, planting a tree won't save the planet. It does show us a good thing, however, that people in the first world do care about climate change and fixing it. It's a topic that's on everybody's mind, and I'm here to say, climate change is an issue. However, I don't agree with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a representative of the United States, and Greta Thunberg saying that we only have 10 to 15 years to live. That's just wrong. Bjorn Lomborg, who works at the UN and at the Copenhagen Consensus, says we at least have till the end of this century, so 2100. And most of the effects due to climate change we will only see in the later part of the century, so 2060, 2070, and onwards. I don't want to be the generation which does nothing about climate change. I do truly want to fix it. However, I don't believe in throwing away money into ineffective policies which don't work. However, first I want to go back in time. In the 1800s, whales almost went extinct. This was because we hunted them for their oil, and we burnt it on the street. It was a good light source. A modern-day solution would be tax the people hunting the whales or tax the whales, but that's not how we solved it. We solved it by innovating. We invented kerosene. Kerosene undercut the price of whale oil by 99 percent, saving all the whales. In the 1900s, there was a lot of manure on the street. How did we solve this? We didn't do it by subsidizing people walking; we solved it by inventing the car. And then, when the car was adding to air pollution, we invented the catalytic converter. In 1970, there was a huge food shortage in India. Now, we didn't solve this problem by subsidizing food for every single Indian; we did it with the Green Revolution. Now, what do all of these have in common? We innovated our way to solve the problem. Now I hear you say, when you say the easiest way to innovate is with government subsidies. Well, sadly, it isn't. Ninety-five percent of our government subsidies actually go don't go to R and D; they go to creating more of what we already have. So it creates to more of these wind turbines, which are extremely ineffective. Now we have the same issue with solar panels. Solar panels have a life expectancy of about 25 years, and then we ship them off to third-world countries, which isn't that beneficial. I'm all up for improving these solar panels, that they're more effective in the future. However, currently they're not a good way of doing it. They also take up a lot of land, which we could use for other things, which I'll talk about later. Bjorn Lomborg did a cost-benefit analysis of climate change, who works at the UN Copenhagen Consensus. And as you can see here, for every dollar, every dollar which we spend. On current green policies, we get a return on investment of 0.03 cents. Is that what we want to be spending our every dollar for? That same dollar can go into green innovation, which would get us about a return on investment of 11 dollars. Now, isn't that a way more effective way of using our one dollar? Here you can see the worldwide CO2 emissions. As you can see, China is number one, followed up by the United States, then India. And other European countries, which are at one or two percent. Now, I want to say, fossil fuels and that industry is the basis of many of their economies, and I don't agree with removing that because a lot of people would then lose jobs. So I'm all up for innovation. However, we still need some fossil fuels just that people can survive and have food on the table. A lot of economists have spoken about a carbon tax. Now, this is great in theory, however, sadly, it doesn't work. A carbon tax would need to put on five dollars per ton globally, which would cut emissions by five to ten percent by the end of the century. So yes, it'd be effective. However, here comes the political issue. China doesn't want a carbon tax. This is because they're an authoritarian society which, and government which doesn't believe in climate change. A lot of people in India won't be able to pay for it, and even when we tried it in France, we had a lot of protests. 
Here you can see German electricity is 1.7 times more expensive than French electricity. Why is that? Well, as you can see here, France gets most of their energy from nuclear energy, and Germany over the last 10 years has put a lot of government regulation to make it more green energy. However, what do we see here? France generates more clean energy sources than Germany does, even though Germany has thought to be of more friendly to the environment and greener. However, clearly, they're not. So we do have part of the solution. Nuclear energy is an extremely viable way of solving the problem which we have at hand. However, a lot of people don't want to do it. I understand living next to a nuclear reactor isn't the most pleasant thing. However, in the larger scale of things, it isn't that bad, and not that many people have died from it, so it isn't that big of an issue. As a Belgian, I've complimented the French too much, so now let's talk about the Paris deal. The Paris deal would have cost us $1 to $2 trillion a year, and by the end of the century, it would have cost us $100 trillion. Now, as you can see on this graph, it's the normal how much degrees it would increase by the end of the century, and the green one, which is slightly under it, is what we would have changed with the Paris deal. 0 0.3 degrees. Firstly, I would say, how dare you be so ineffective? However, sadly, it doesn't do much, and we would have wasted all of our 100 trillion into doing nothing. It might make us feel good. However, sadly, that doesn't matter. We need to find better ways. Firstly, I want to talk about what could we do with the same amount of money to put into perspective. As you can see here, we can double the number of hospitals in Denmark, have the number of malaria cases in the world, which would be beneficial for the third world and making it better for them to live in, and eightfold increase the R&D of CO2-reducing energy technologies. And you'd probably win a Nobel Peace Prize as well. And this would have cost us, in total, $8 billion. Isn't that a more effective way of spending our money? We would have done more good for the entire planet, which would have put our children in a better place, and we would have done more than changing it by 0 0.3 degrees with 100 trillion, and this is only 8 billion. Bill Gates did it right. With the breakthrough energy ventures, him and nine other investors collectively put in $7 billion into clean energy R&D. And this is how we solve the problem. We innovate to solve the problem, and this is what's great about it, and Bill Gates did it right. Fundamentally, if we can reduce the price of green energy with external investment, we have won. It'll be cleaner energy, China and India and everywhere across the world will want to use this, because there's no more point using fossil fuels. Then we have won. It's just like how we got the computer. We didn't do it by subsidizing uh, typewriters. We did it by innovating. And innovation is the solution to all our problems. Just like how it was, it was for the whales, just like the manure on the street, and like the starving kids in India. Thank you.